this is a system that uh, I wanted for some time. Actually, I wanted a 464. I never thought I'd have a 6128 because they're, they're kind of expensive. This one came up um, last February on eBay and uh, it was in bad enough condition. It apparently didn't work and uh, it was missing a key. So nobody was really bidding on it for whatever reason, but I, I, put a, I, I put a couple of euro on it and I managed to get it. So when it came to me, it came with a few spare cables, like the volume, a spare volume control knob and the spare speaker and a few bits and pieces like that. But uh, it was missing a key. So a key on an Amstrad has two springs. It has a small little spring on the interior. This fella here, he makes contact with the membrane and registers the key press. And also there's this, a larger spring that sits over it like this. And its job is um, when you let go of the key, it pushes it back up so that this clears the membrane and isn't sitting on it. And it also gives a nice little, a nice little key pressy pressiness. But um, one of the keys, the M key, was missing this spring. So when I bought replacement keys, I bought one just to replace the key that was missing, and I bought, um, I had to take a second one because um, I wanted this spring for the M key. So uh, that's that's basically what I did. In order to um, to get the right symbol on it, I used light sandpaper. It was a U key. Uh, there was U written on the key I, I, I used to replace the, um, the missing key. I used light sandpaper and I just sanded off the letter so it just became, just became white, like new plastic. And uh, I used a permanent marker just to draw on the symbol I wanted. And that was all. That was all I did. And um, that's how I replaced the key. And when I opened it on the inside, it, uh, it had a load of capacitors that needed changing because they were, they were broken. And I thought maybe it had suffered um, too much current, too much voltage into it that had, that had destroyed it on the inside. But um, what I did to make sure was I've got a Spectrum Phone computer here in the, uh, in the basement. So it uses a Z80 processor as does this. So I tried the Z80 out of this in the Spectrum clone and it worked. So I was confident enough that uh, the board hadn't suffered any kind of power spikes or anything like that. So um, I just swapped out the capacitors that were in it and I made up the couple of cables and I got it working to a point where I could load up uh, cassette stuff. Spinning this around and looking at the back, we can see that the, the 6128 needs two power supplies. It needs a 12 volt DC power supply uh, providing 0 0.4 amps. And that's for the stepper motor in the, in the disk drive. Now, if you're not planning on using the disk drive, it'll work way fine without this power supply. Uh, the main power supply that it needs is the 5 volt DC. And it needs to be providing 1.7 amps. So um, what I did was I used a 5 volt 2 amp power supply from a tablet from a tablet and um yeah that's what i used to provide the 5 volts and i used a usb cable that i snipped and i just put a barrel jack on the end that would fit into the 5 volt uh, slot on the cpc um, I was lucky enough with the 12 volt one because, uh, well, I keep nearly everything that uh, <laughs> that breaks on me. But um, this is actually from a hair clippers and it's a 12 volt power supply that provides uh, 600 milliamp bears. So uh, what that is, that's effectively a 12 volt uh, 0 0.6 amp power supply. And what this needs is 12 volt at 0 0.4 amps. So this is more than adequate to power the um, the 12 volt part of this. Now I did have to change the connector again and um, this is using a female connector. So uh, yeah, so it's it's a bit of a kind of a bodge job because it plugs into, into this guy here that would usually go into the monitor uh, of the uh, CPC to provide the 12 volt. But the difference on this is that it has a center center negative the 5 volt is center positive but uh, this guy needs to be center negative if not um if if it's not made up correctly and it's plugged in it will do damage to the um to the 6128 so that was how i supplied power to it 
the Amstrad CPC was never ever intended to be connected to a regular TV. It was sold with a green or a color monitor and that was the way it was supposed to be used. But we can actually use the, um, the signals that are given by this uh, monitor jack and we can make a SCART cable because it gives us two synchronous signals, ground and red, green and blue. So we, we have everything we need in fact to make a SCART cable that will work on a modern day TV. Now the thing about SCART cables is that um, generally speaking if you're to use red, green and blue SCART which is what we need to use here, uh, the television needs to know that that's what we're using and not just composite through pin 20 on the SCART cable. And in order to do that we need to supply at least 1.5 volts to pin 16 on the SCART cable. Now luckily one of these one of these two pins here, pin four in fact, uh, provides a little over three volts. It's a, it's a synchronous signal that's running at a little over three volts and we can hijack that to provide 1.5 volts or a little more to the uh, to pin 16 to enable red, green, blue SCART. And then when it's plugged in, it'll give you a lovely, crisp, clear signal on your TV. Now, this um, schematic up here that I've put up for the cable worked great for me on one TV I have, but just gave me a black and white signal on another. So depending on the TV you have, uh, this particular uh, way of making the cable may not work for you, but there are many other ways out there to make them up and you will, you will find one that will work. And, and it was working fine, everything was fine, the joystick port, everything was okay. So um, I noticed that the, the drive didn't have a belt in it and somebody had tried to fix the drive because it wasn't working and they had obviously replaced the belt and saw that it wasn't working so tinkered around a little bit with some of the settings and uh, possibly made it worse than it was because obviously they didn't get it to work they took the um they took the belt out again they put it all back together and uh, when I received it, that's the way it was. So me putting in a new belt and cleaning and greasing everything didn't make any difference. But um, what I did was I followed all the advice that I found on the internet between YouTube videos, CPC Wiki and all that to get this drive to work. And doing the, um, the things that work for 98% of cases um, didn't work for me. I, I got to a stage where it knew there was a disc in the drive, but it couldn't read it. And um, well, it was, it, it, there were funny enough little problems. What I've done is I put this drive back to, um, to where it was when I got it more or less so that I could show you what I did and what I went through. And um, yeah, I, I tried to recreate the faults. I recreated most of them so, um, so you can see what I did. Maybe if you're having some of those faults yourself, this video may be of use to you. But um, in the end, it was playing with the stepper motor that, um, that got the system back working for me. So here we are. The part that was causing hassle, as, as I could see it, was this little part here. It's the part that has little sensor on it. And when this guy here, he passes across, it stops it right there. And then it can read, it's at the right, the right point on the disc that it can, it can read the sector it needs to read or the, the part of the disc it reads, needs to read to get the contents. It's like a, uh, the fault point, the starting point on, on the disc. And this can be adjusted so that you can set the default point on the disc yourself. Now, this is my understanding of it. So um, the way I achieved this, this screw right here, I just loosened it ever so little so that this could freely slide. See this little, um, it's a little, a little portion here that can freely slide up and down so what I did was I pushed it right up to the very end, right up to this end here, as far as it could go. And I, I made sure it was right up to the very end. 
and I just tightened the screw ever so slightly. And what I did was, I placed my screwdriver down here and gave it the slightest little push, the slightest little push of just about a millimeter, and I tightened it. And I said to myself, well, I said, we'll see if that makes a difference. Move that little sensor ever so slightly, just to see would it repair it. And I tried again. I read in the CPC wiki that people had had problems with this, the stepper motor. And the idea of the stepper motor is that it will move, it will move the reed head uh, to an exact position. So it'll go between all the different uh, tracks on the disc and move it to an exact position. And um, if it's out of alignment it won't go to the exact position but just to beside it you know so if it it go between tracks and always go between tracks and wouldn't read what isn't really recommended to do but i figured at this stage as i had tried everything i had i had um as i say i had resoldered everything i had checked all the connectors and recrimped little connectors that needed to be recrimped I had tried to adjust the stepper, not the stepper motor, the little index sensor. I had screwed around with this little thing, which I'm not 100% sure what it does. Um, I didn't touch this. I didn't touch this. This is part of the, um, the sensor mechanism for the disc and all that. I didn't want to touch that because that's something that can't be realigned by eye or by hand very well. So I didn't touch that. Also, this particular screw here, I didn't dare touch because it's to do with this bar here, which is to do with the um, the angle and adjustment of the actual um, of the actual reed head. So that I can't adjust. I don't have any specialist tools. But the one thing I figured I could do, I could do before I went any further, was to loosen uh, the two screws in the stepper motor. I took a flathead screwdriver and i just slightly loosened each screw but now as you can see i can freely i can freely turn this so i can um i can try it adjust it retry it adjust it and we'll see if it makes any difference so having messed around with that little bit a lot it took about 10 minutes or so where I could get to the point where I typed cat and I got a menu. We'll just see. So the old CPC was working away at charm, or so I thought, until I decided to run disk to CDT. And uh, what happened was, disk to CDT was doing what it should do until it went to format a disk, and then it wouldn't format it. It finished out with an error, and it was strange because it it would run games. The system would run games. I could type in a basic program and save it to a disk power down power up load it back up again everything was fine everything appeared to be working fine until i went to format so with the cpc there's no actual command in cpc dos that you can format a disk so i went on the internet and i found this it's a basic program that you type it in and you can save it to disk because that i could do and it will allow you to format disks so i said great and i spent whatever it took 10 20 minutes to type it in and I tried with a disk and what it did was it effectively made the disk unusable. 
So uh, I didn't want to try with all the discs I had because I only had eight of them. So what I did was um, I had a good think about it. And I remember reading in the in the wiki forums and CPC wiki forums that um, the speed of rotation of the disc could be adjusted. Here, this is the regular little motor. It's not the stepper motor or anything. This is your regular little motor here. And there's a little a little um, cover here on it, a little rubber cover that you can insert the screwdriver into and you can change the speed of rotation. Once you put it in, you turn it anti-clockwise to slow down and clockwise to speed up. So I thought maybe it was something to do with that. So what I did was everything's still connected up and my one disc that I had rendered unusual, unusable by trying to format it, I slowed down uh, the speed of rotation by just a tad and issued the format command again. And I went through the went through the motions of format and everything seemed fine, format complete, and then I did a cat and the disc was unreadable. I slowed it down another little bit, through the same thing, unreadable, slowed it down again. And it took maybe eight times and eventually it formatted the disc for me. And after that, everything worked exactly as it should. So the long and the short of it is that if you're having problems formatting discs, or uh, it could well be down to the speed of rotation on the, um, on the disc drive that it's either too slow or too fast. Now, I don't know what speed uh, it was running at when it wasn't working correctly. The speed of rotation should be somewhere between uh, 290 and 310, with 300 in or around being the optimal. Now, I was higher than that because as I slowed it down bit by bit, I suppose I went down maybe 20, 20 RPMs. So uh, at that stage, I had a working CPC. So that's what I did to get the system up and working, and it's working good now. So um, I, I've used this to make the disk to CDT video, and if it can run that, it can pretty much run anything. The system is good, the memory is good in it, the drive is good in it. It's working great. So um, yeah, I hope this video has been of use to you. I hope at least you've enjoyed watching it. Um, if so, think about subscribing. Give us a now thumbs up. Leave a comment, let us know um, if, if you've got an Amstrad, if you've had some of these problems, or maybe other problems, um, if you've managed to resolve them. Um, if you don't like it, do the thumbs down thing. Thumbs down thing, say, look, that guy, thumbs down. That's fine too. And um, that being said, we'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastical day or evening or night or morning. I don't know, I don't know when you're watching this video, but have, have a good one and uh, we'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>